Welcome to another edition of the FGA Report. I am joined by Pokeway, also known as Landland, his actual name. Most people know him as Pokeway on Twitter. Uh, I've known him for a couple of years. He's really supportive of the Polk County, Florida kids. And I, I want to talk about some of them and kind of compare them to a few kids in Central Florida. We both know a lot of them. But why it's important for schools to recruit Polk County and all the talent. And we've got three main kids we're going to talk a little bit about with some film up here, going to get a chance for Landwin to talk about some of the players he knows because he knows all the schools in Polk County really good. So Landwin, thank you very much for coming on the show, man. I appreciate it. No doubt. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. All right, man. Um, the number one thing with Polk County kids is just how competitive they are. That's my general name when people ask me. Um, you've lived there for a long time. You're a Lakeland guy. What do you, before I throw up some film here, what, what is it about the Lake County kids that you think separates them from a lot of other areas? Doesn't have to be Florida, but from wherever. Um, just football is, <clears throat> football is huge here. Um, just when yeah. you look at the history, um, you're talking about Marquise Pouncey. You're talking about Ray Lewis. Um, so, oh, yeah. so just, it's always been in, in the community, in families. It's always been big to be a guy in football. Um, when you look at Lakeland and what they did with that three feet back from 04 mm -hmm. to 06, that those teams are still considered some of the best teams ever in high school football, not even just Florida history, right? High school football history. And then you look at the per capita of how many people are here in comparison to how many four and five stars we have year in and year out. Um, it's just, how could you not want to live up to that? When you see a Derwin James, in high school and then you see him excel in college and then you see him making pro bowls how could you not want to be a guy like that and then it just never ends it keeps going with gabe dendies and demarcus bowman's and jermon dexter's and arian smith's and every kid here wants to be on that status and you know just with football being a religion and football being year round here um i think it definitely gives that competitive edge if you go to the park at four o'clock up to simpson park it's going to be kids out there competing just playing seven on seven, just to, you know, polish their game and get better. Um, so I definitely think football being a religion definitely fuels that competitive edge here. Well, I, I totally agree. And it's why that I, I started FGA report. There are other areas in Florida that are similar. Uh, I think Pope is in general, the best per capita County in the, in the state. It's not, like you said, it's not as populated as like St. Petersburg and Fort Lauderdale different, but per capita, and it's just right down the road from the Orlando airport, you're not going to find better talent level right. here, especially the athlete positions, corner, receiver, running back. For whatever reason, those spots, and Florida's good at those spots anyway, but like right now, we're going to talk about it here in just a second, it is insane. Mm -hmm. If you can't find a DB receiver or running back in this county, then you're blind. Exactly. So uh, first kid is, is – I'm just going to go big here. Uh, first kid that I'm going to share the screen and show – is one that many probably know, and I know that you know him well, and I do too, and that's Cormani McLean. Uh, Cormani plays at Lake Gibson, and he's a kid that, like we were talking off air, he, I mean, he's – he I likes receiver corner. better, but watching his ball skills, I like him in corner. And I think that's what makes him such a great corner is that he, he plays the cornerback position with the mind of a receiver. If you watch, he literally runs the route for guys. If you like, just pay attention to the film. He literally runs the route with the receiver. Yeah, he just came from the flat and intercepted that. Yeah, and it wasn't even hard. Like he he gallops. He does not run. Covers so much ground, man. It's freakish. I bet he would have been one hell of a if he just would have concentrated on track. Being a triple jump guy or something like that, he probably would have been really good. You got to see him dunk. His bounce is crazy. Oh, I'm sure it's 35 plus easy. Oh, yeah. There's no yeah. The oh, oh, man. You the other thing about him. him here. Yeah, the other thing about him, like you said, he runs it like a receiver and he catches it like a receiver. A lot of DBs yeah. are really good, but they don't complete the play. It drives me nuts. But he's legitimately a guy with tremendous, not good, but tremendous hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. And that's why Cormani has offers from everybody. Um, I have no idea where he's going to go to college before anybody messages me or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, and, and frankly, I don't care where Cormani commits because I, I doubt that matters very much. 
I'm sure he's going to take visits. He, he's a Florida kid, but he's a kid that's got Alabama. He's got Florida State. He's got you know he's got all the offers. USC, Oregon, you name it. Yeah, yeah, he's got coast to coast. The only question with him is, does he want to leave home? What kind of what's he want to do? He's for people that don't know, he's a pretty introverted kid. Like you can walk up mm -hmm. to him and talk to him, but you're going to do most of talking. Right. He's just not. He's just not <laughs> a real talkative guy. Yeah. That's just who he is. But he's very competitive. Uh, this is the kind of athlete that I, I think Cormani is a national top 10, top 15 player. Um, he may even be top five. If yeah, he, every he's like consensus number four, I believe. Cons either number three or number four consensus through rivals ESPN, yeah. 247 and on three. I, I've i worked for some of that stuff. I don't put as much stock into it in, in specific rankings. I just know from seeing him play, Ward only knows how many times. I've seen him get beat deep once in like, five times that I've seen him play. And that was against another power five kid. So that tells me that he's really good. And all these interceptions are not accidents. And correct me if I'm wrong, as a sophomore, he set the state of Florida record with 10 picks. So well, he had nine last year and came back this year and broke the nine with 10. Okay. Well, there you go. He's, uh, he's just ridiculous. So he, he finds a way to make plays in last year's secondary for Wake Gibson about as good as there's ever going to be in just a random high school football. Yeah, area. That's ever. Like that, the secondary they had this past season is comparable to an IMG. Yeah. And about it's just Devontae a bunch of kids McClendon hanging out in like Right. Javante McClendon, four star, Sam McCall, five star, Cromani, five star, Deion Villers, three star, and Brayshawn Williams was, you know, that nickel guy uh, and came in for after some injuries, but even he's blown up. But yeah, Cromani is just, oh, it's, the last guy who I've seen be this dominant on a football field what in Polk County was Derwin James. And that's a high standard to hold your name to. And Cormani is a dirt. I can't even say he's a Derwin James because he's a Cormani. He's a guy that people are going to be comparing. Oh, yeah, yeah. To. That's a great way to put it. Derwin is a totally different player. Talent, right. Yeah. They, they, and all that. Yeah. But, yeah. but Derwin would thump you. He was, he's a bigger, stronger guy. But – Cormani's ability to break on the football and he has spider arms. Right. I mean, like you walk up and shake his hand, like he can reach across the room and shake your hand. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I mean, he, God blessed him. Right. And that's, that's a different deal. So I'm going to, I think we've seen enough of Cormani here. Uh, it's pretty obvious. He does not suck. He's, uh, <laughs> he's as good as it's pretty much going to get. This next kid is, is somebody I'm just learning about. And I know it's somebody that you're familiar with living in Polk and all that. And that's why I brought you on. But this is a kid who recently got Florida State. I don't remember all his offers, but he is what I call a three clipper. And for those of you who don't know that are just starting to watch the show or it's the first time, but three clipper for me is the following. I can watch three clips of him and I know he can play power five football athletically. Change of direction, burst, hand-eye coordination all the little things that you look at, and then hopefully you see a few things right away on their film because they put the best plays at the beginning that show you football acumen as well, and this will not disappoint. So this is Jeremiah Anglin Jr. He's at Lake Wales, and quite frankly, he's one of my favorite players in Florida because I'm not sure just yet where I would put him. Um, nickel corner, do you want to play him? Do you want to play him? For, on this play here, they got him at free safety. He can play receiver. He he told me, you know, he's probably going to play DB. But the way he runs, I mean, he could be a slot receiver. Mm -hmm. You have so many options. Like Cormani, if you get it in his area, it's going the other direction. He's also one of those kids, you throw it up, you better be sure. Because he's, he's not going to drop it. He's going to take it the other direction as these keep showing. And, and the uh, thing I love the most about Jeremiah – uh, before the national Adidas combine or the, before the national combine, you know, he was primarily slept on as, by schools and, you know, by rankings sure. and things like that. So he has an edge right now that he's still fighting for. He has something to prove. You know what I mean? So that's good. I love how hard he's going to continue to play and how hard and how much work he puts in because he still feels like he has a chip on his shoulder. That's the way it should be. And it's right there. There's a receiver. I, he could play either side. I'm, either way. Yeah, either it, way. It, it don't matter. But 
This catch right here is as good a play as you're going to see. I'm going to run that again. This catch, right, uh, you can't teach the, it, it, the ability to go through a play and, and not worry about fear. A lot of guys would have come over and tried to knock. He just went for the ball, did not care. Right. Football coaches love that. Exactly. And this by is, the way, this I'm going to give my one stereotypical moment here. Why does anybody kick to kids like this? <laughs> it's so dumb. All these highlights, you see kids, like, they kicked a Cormani or something. That guy should be fired immediately. <laughs> it's just dumb. And then right there again, the hands. Jeremiah can play at Alabama. Yeah. He can play at USC. He can play at Texas A&M. He can play at Ohio State, Notre Dame, Florida, whatever yeah. you want. It don't matter. His hands are phenomenal. And that's that's why I wonder about receiver. It's not out of the question, but corner is the hardest spot. You got to start him there probably. And I think because he plays free safety, that nickel slash overhang mm -hmm. combo safety linebacker spot, like Nick Saban's defense, he calls it star. Right. Yeah. I think that would be because he's got some – he's a poke kid. He's got some physicality to him. He's got a little edge to him. But he's also very football savvy. He right. has football acumen, and that star position, man. You line up in that slot in college football, you'll get a 6'5", 255, tight end. Then the next play, it's 5'9", 165, slot. you got to be able to cover both, back-to-back right. -back play. That's why you got to have a guy like Jeremiah who is versatile. So I, I'm very high on him. I'm getting ready to kind of release, if you will. I'm, as soon as we get done, actually, I'm going to formalize it been working on it for a couple of weeks. My, my Florida list of kids that I've seen and been around, this is one of them that's going to be on the list. Gotcha. By the, by the way, again, why, why would you kick to him? This, I, I already know what's going to happen here. This guy needs to be fired. I don't even know who that school is, but I mean, it's a joke. Why would you kick to kids like this at the high school? Well, that's just dumb. It's so dumb. He's truly a guy. And, it's in his bloodline. You know, he's the cousin of Vince and Carlos Williams. So it's it's in his bloodline to be a guy. A lot of his cousins, the Anglin brothers, uh, Laurie brothers at Duquesne right now, um, it's in his bloodline to be a guy, you know. Yeah. So. All right. I think we've got the got the picture here with him. He, he is a dude. Uh, for anybody out there, Lake Wales High School, I'm going to make a little pitch here. I did a little show on recently. From senior class down to freshman class, they got guys. They got a freshman running back, Henderson, that is going to be power five. Mm -hmm. He didn't even get to start last year. I know he's freshman, but I went and watched him the other day. He's 5'9", five, 5'10", five, man, they need 5'10", 5'11". He's 190 plus pounds. He looks like he's physically ready now. Right. But he's, I mean, but you see the face. He's back, got baby face. He's 14, 15 years old. You're like, this kid isn't even going to be their primary player next year. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like Lake Wales, uh, there were five or six A, and of course five. he's – but they got guys, and there's Mitchell. I know it's Car Carlos Mitchell. What the yeah, heck is Carlos. Speed out, out the yin yang. You know, he's a kid that's he's only going to be a junior this fall. And right. that's just, you know, Terrell James, the defensive end. They have a bunch of guys. Guys. Yeah, not one. They've got five or six kids that have a chance, and every year there's a different one. And that's just a great example. Auburndale's that way. Haines City's that, There's always a kid never great that has a chance. You just got to contact the coaches mm -hmm. and stay in contact with them. And the kids move around, Bartow, wherever. But it, it kind of takes its takes its own course over time. All right. The last kid that I want to I want to talk about is not going to be a real big shocker either. But there's a reason. Tyler Williams is example of what poke is uh, in recent memory, not just because he's talented. Number one, he's a hooper. I mean, he will straight up highlight. If you want to see good video. He dropped 20 last night. Like, what's Oh, did name? he really? On the 18th, he dropped 20 last night. He's he's a he's a chill kid, but he's, I'd say, six three and a half, six four, somewhere in there, whatever he is. But he's the kind of kid that could probably come within an inch or so of jumping up and touching the top of his head on the rim. Mm -hmm. He has that kind of hop. Right. That puts things in perspective. I mean, when you look at it, he has uh, an FGCU offer for basketball. And if he concentrated just on hoops, he could be a Big Ten ACC kid. Exactly. And yeah, a, lot uh, of, a lot of schools are starting to pitch the basketball and football. I mean, it's really hard, but receiver is one of the few positions you can do it because you don't have to gain a lot of bulk. Right. Like football is so different training-wise. I'd be weary with a lot of kids. 
But this kid I'm about to throw on the screen will take the take the ball off your head. He's when you're like standing next to him. I'm five ten. When I'm standing next to him, the thing I look at first is arm length and how long are the legs. Where does where does the hip begin? Got he it. is a spider. He's a lot like Cormani, but even taller. Mm -hmm. And th this is a great story. They they didn't know what to do with him last year at Lakeland. They told me he did, he tried to play quarterback. Right. Yeah. Win the job. Spring spring and summer he was playing quarterback. Yeah. And then up it, until right at the end, and right, Coach he, Castle's he, he, like, I'm not standing him next to me on the sideline. Right, yeah, he has to get on the field. So they just threw him out at receiver, and I, I know the receiver coach there, he's a friend of mine, and he's like, I don't know. I think the either the first or second game he scored three touchdowns. The first? He had no idea what he was doing and scored three times. If if he gets coached up and continues, and he is a motivated kid, mm -hmm. he's got academics. You and I were talking about this off the air. Notre Dame does not recruit in Polk County much. Most right. kids don't fit. They offered him early. Like, he is a priority for Notre Dame. Right. That tells you he's a different kind of kid. Exactly. And he's got the hand-eye coordination. But here, here's the thing. Usually when you got a long-legged kid, it's real high at the hip, they don't change direction well. As you will see here in a minute for people who get ready to watch the film, Tyler, I mean, he's not, you know, he, he he's not Reggie Bush, but he will make guys miss at over 6'3". Right. When you can combine that with his hand-eye coordination and his leaping ability, you see why Florida State's, Notre Dame's, whatever. He can pretty much pick his school, and I would imagine by June he'll have 35 offers. Yeah. That would be my guess. Surely. And we'll see. But I'll let everybody make their own. And remember, this was his first year playing receiver. He doesn't know what he's doing. This offseason is going to be a huge jump for him, so it's kind of scary. He actually learns how. Oh, yeah. Learn Get off bump. Understand yeah. how to stack guys. Like, oh yeah, all, all the above is about to get live. Another so. guy who works out with Coach Mark. Oh okay, yeah, Coach Mark down at Lake Wales is tremendous. Look, I mean, when you're running by guys that are smaller than you, it's always a good thing. And look at the how long he is at the leg. Like this is a kid that's got a gear. This is a great throw, by the way, for off the off the back foot. That's pretty good for considering. But this is the fun part. He's got two guys. Boom. <laughs> I mean, that, that is not what six, three and a half, six, four kids do. It right. is not. And here, here's me complaining again. Why would you kick him the ball? You dumb as all get out. Just stupid. And that's what you get for kicking him the ball. Drives me bananas, man. It's my pet peeve in, in high school football. Kids a dude, man. Right. I mean, that was a really bad route and he still scored. I mean, he didn't even cut that hard but he still beat the guy. Once he learns the ability to make sharper cuts, it's going to be all over. That's against the pop gun. You will not go I up against this. I wish they would have had the film of that route. That I route didn't see the guy yeah, touch I, the earth. But yeah, they started it late. They started the film on that play late, but he literally made the guy touch the earth. It was crazy. Oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> That is a good sign. But look, I mean, this is ridiculous how far in front of these kids. But, and look at that. Six, like three and a half, six, four kids do not make moves like that and just become, quote, unquote, average college football players. Look at the speed. And he just goofing around like he did, he just okie doke that kid for funsies. You know what I mean? That, that He just got a YouTube. I can't wait till he learns how to be a receiver. No lie, depending on how motivated he is and from what little I've been around him, and I don't know how much you know him, if he's truly motivated, because his upside is as high as anybody in the country at his position, this is a guy that could end up being a top 10 NFL draft pick. Correct. Because those alpha outside receivers that play to the boundary, you almost, just by schematics, you have to, well, that's a great catch, you have to cover them one-on-one. -on -one. Who's After he learns technique, Athletically, he's already – God gave him things you cannot have exactly. more of. Speed, moves, hands, all of it. And he doesn't even know what he's doing. Like, his route running is mediocre, and I'm being kind. He, he does not know how to run routes yet. I mean, we're almost three minutes through, and that was the first non-touchdown. That's kind of scary. Yeah, I don't know what his totals were. I know that Max Preps had his totals way goofed up. But the plays that are most important are ones like this. He's not going to score here, but that should be second and five. Instead, it's first and ten. 
Right. Can you make plays after physical contact? Whether you're a running back, tight end, or receiver, that's the name of the game now. If you look at like how Alabama recruits, and I'll just use the elephant in the room, yes, pun intended, <laughs> they recruit kids that make people miss. That's their number one thing. Nobody runs screens better than Alabama, and they usually take six foot, six foot one kids by and large. This kid can run screens. He reminds me of a Jai Hall that signed with Alabama. Mm -hmm. They played over in the Tampa area where I'm at. If you get a 6'3 dude that can make people miss, I mean, brother, that's that's a whole nother deal. And quite quite honestly, I'm very excited about what Tyler can do long term. Right. Because I have again, I haven't talked to him recently. And I'll 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 get him on the show. I might get him on the show with you in another month or so. Do you know who Tyler's playing seven on with? Um, so right now it's kind of a toss up with uh, him wanting to play AU basketball. Oh, um, I got you. Yeah, he really hasn't committed to a team yet to say, "Hey, I'm you know gonna be locked in" because he knows that he wants to still pursue basketball at least through his junior year. You know, he doesn't have to make that decision right now. Of, I'm gonna be a basketball player. I'm gonna be a football player. So um, I know he might be with Prime Truth. He may even be with Fast. I know SFE wants them, but I'm not trying to let him get them. But if if he wants to do SFE, you know, I'll be more than happy to see him with How SFE. many footballs do you have? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. SFE just wants to load up and have kids on their bench. Like, you know, spread the wealth a little bit. They already yeah. have Brandon Ennis. Like, come on. Yeah. I know the guys with Prime Truth, they're Tampa area guys. And that would be interesting. They got a lot of young players that are really yeah. good. So I don't care what day school plays with them. So yeah, I, I'm friends with. Them. I live ten minutes from that school. So gotcha. yeah, yeah, and man, they, that that's not your normal group of underclassmen, right? At all. That twenty four twenty five unit is literally scary. Yeah, yeah. If they get any line play, they're going to get a ring. Um, now that we kind of went through those three, I'm just going to give you the floor. Uh, we mentioned before we came on that it, this is hilarious, by the way. We we talked about Lake Gibson, Cormani, and all the guys they had. Brayshawn Williams, mm -hmm. nobody knew who he was. And I remember talking to somebody, they're like, Well, who's the other DB? And I said, I don't know who it is, but he better be good because nobody throwing at Cormani. Brayshawn went out there and did so well, knowing that he was going to get thrown out. And he's a 24 kid, yes? Right, 24. So he's got two years of high school left. Then now he's got a bunch of power. Five. Can, just, just for people to know, he's about a six foot, 5'11 kid, whatever, 170. He's got Oregon and who all's he got? Like, who Oregon, else he got? USC, uh, Florida State, Miami, you name it. You name it. He only has 12 offers right now, but they're all high you know, end. Right. It's not, it's, it's those blue chip schools that you, that you want to see a kid have or that kids dream of having. Um, that's who he jumped out the gate with. So you talk about your SEC, your ACC, your Big 12, your Pac-12. He's getting He has offers from all those conferences. Oklahoma, um, UCF will be Big 12 soon. Uh, he, he just had every conference, Power 5, he has an offer from so far. Well, his first this, 12. <laughs> this is what I want to point out to people from a recruiting education standpoint. Usually, even a kid like Cormani, and I don't remember who his first offer was, it'll be Toledo, Florida Atlantic, uh, Marshall. It'll be a non-P5. It's almost automatic. If you're starting out, even if your first one wasn't, but then all of a sudden you're jumping into upper tier power five, there's a reason. That means your film backs it up across the board. Because coaches argue all the time. Right. You no, know, it's... Like I used to like I used to be pretty good friends with Urban Meyer. I used to argue with him about different guys. Football is complex. Everybody can have a different opinion about what position a kid should play, or he's ranked better than this guy, blah, blah, blah. When you get those kind of offers right out the gate, you got two years of high school left. That's why I keep telling people, and I, I retweet your stuff all the time and Hassani and all these. It is insane how many guys are in the greater, I'm just going to name some of these cities for coaches out there, Haines City, Auburndale, Lakeland, Bartow. It is insane. Mulberry, Lake Wales, all these schools, Fort Meade. You know what I mean? You're going to find somebody. 
it's just you have to put in the effort. And too many coaches are lazy. Mm -hmm. Drives me, and I know it drives you nuts too. I don't even have to ask. <laughs> it's why we do what we do. Right. But FDA report was literally created, not for me to get on here and blab, but to talk about kids in primarily rural areas like Polk, that outside the city of Lakeland, it's pretty rural. A lot of just rolling neighborhoods, extensions yeah. of cities. And the kids don't have, even though they're fairly close to Orlando, they're a world away from it. Oh, it is God. totally different. Because you go to the central to south part of Polk, you might as well be in West Texas. It's just cow Literally. country. It's just cows. It, <laughs> Literally. And cows and orange groves. That's it. Like People don't know this is a farm state. Yeah, it literally is. And Polk County is the beginning of all the all the cattle ranches. But out, you go down to South Central, just above the lake, man, there's ranches that go for miles of corporate ranches and stuff. <laughs> Polk is the beginning of that. So some of these kids, they don't understand. Like, I'll ask the kid, where's Notre Dame at? Where's Duke at? Where's Wake? Forest? They don't know what state they, they live in a pretty small bubble. But the way that changes is kids got to visit. School's got to come down here. And there is no way in hell you're going to tell me, and we'll talk about Brayshawn the next time I get you on the show, but, like, there is no way a school like NC State, I'll just use them, they're like a mid-level to slightly above mid-level ACC school. Brayshawn, when he's done in high school, if he goes to NC State, he would play as a freshman. Yeah. He might even start. Yeah. And I would – I've seen him. He probably won't even be the best player in Polk County his senior year. Mm -hmm. He might be. But, I mean, based on recent history, there's a national top 10 kid in our county or, or possibly pretty much every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, the past seven, eight. There's always a guy that yeah. can go, like Alabama is going to offer a poke kid every year oh, yeah. and probably multiple. Like Keonis Thompson, I know you're familiar with him. You're a Lakeland guy. Great kid. Alabama does not offer random defense. Correct. And here's the funny part. He wasn't even their best defensive end. That was the craziest part. If Dendy was healthy all year. Well, they Dendy, like Nasir wasn't even healthy. Yeah, this, when we went you know. to uh, – I took Nasir out to Dallas for um, the Pylon National Championship, and he got injured. Then, well, he had already injured his uh, ACL, and he tweaked it again uh, in 707 in the okay. National Tournament. And then it just kind of lingered. But it happened before, and it just kept lingering. I don't know if he right. rehabbed it properly. So uh, I'm glad now that he's he's getting healthy with his time off before transitioning to Toledo. Um, but, yeah, they were banged up all year. Yeah, they were. Um, and, like, like Keonis was not you, – you think about Dendy. Um, yeah, he had that – hand. It had a funky hand injury, really. Ligament and the whole nine yards. And, I mean, there another defensive tackle is currently blowing up a 23 guy. Yeah, I don't know much about him. I need to I need to find out what the deal is. What what's his name? Spread his name for him. Guerlins Milford. Everybody calls him G G Milford. Um he's one of those guys that does like shot put and uh discus and track. He's a state guy in track. Um he's a D tackle, 2023 D tackle. He's just a tank. He's one of he's probably the strongest guy with Dindy and Keanu's leaving. I remember that. Like he, they just put him at nose and said, try yeah. to move him. Yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, I mean he there's no other way to say it. Mama gave him a backside to play interior D-line. Yeah. You can tell he eats pretty good at home. Collard greens, macaroni, and cheese. Uh, yeah, he, he rolling. He's yeah, rolling. He's a heavyweight kid. Um, he does I, – I believe he does weightlifting as well, so that will make him a three-sport guy. Um, just, a, just a tank up front. And, you know, I think his most recent offer was FAU. Um, but he's start, starting to catch on. And this spring, uh, he's going to go up and get even more – with you know them having other power five guys on their squad like Tyler, um, yeah, Lakeland's not. Sh that's the one school in Polk County. Everybody, whether they want to or not, tries to get to Lakeland High School. Traditionally, yeah. there's there's a few exceptions to that, and it's not right off I four. You got to go into the city a little bit, but it's still pretty easy to get to. So right, but yeah, Usually having Tyler helps. Usually, yeah, I. I'm curious to see, because you can never have enough D line. Bobby Bowden even used to talk about that, and I laughed because I was like, "You have more than anybody." Um, back in the late '90s, that was a joke. But the fact of the matter is, if you have a 290 plus pound guy that can man the middle, 
and to command a double team because you are you can't have kids like that getting a free run at your quarterback. That's how your season comes to a halt. Right. Then it opens up guys like a Dendy or whatever. You know, give me any defense. That'd be Lakeland. Those guys are super, super coveted. They change a defense. Like you and I were talking about Baylor before this show t- started. I love Dave Aranda as a coach. He was the 2019 LSU defense coordinator, moved over to Baylor. They won two games in 20. This past year, they won the Big 12. He runs a 3-4 with a true nose guard. The nose guard that was at LSU transferred over a 350 guy conservatively. If you don't double team him, you're in trouble, but that's how his linebackers went nuts. This is the kind of kid, he may not be 350, but he's going to play at 310 or something like that at the college level. He's going to cause havoc. So, again, Polk is always – going to have corners and receivers. I don't know what it is. I've never seen it where it wasn't loaded. Like Lakeland has five kids, just like Lake Gibson. They're going to play college football, just in secondary. That's just two schools. Yeah, I was, five this, plus. Lakeland versus Lake Gibson game was the first time in Lakeland, Lake Gibson history that all eight defensive backs are FBS kids on both ways. And you could say 10 because – Because the nickelback. Uh, yeah, the nickelbacks from both right. schools – our yeah. FBS kids. So this that was the first time you could say 10 defensive backs in that game would be FBS kids. Here's the question I have for you. The Lake, and this is rare. Lakeland gets the most pub mm-hmm. in the greater Polk County. And it's there's no second place because they got all the, you know, Coach Castle's one of the most famous coaches in the country, blah, blah, blah. Which player out of that younger group of DBs do you like for Lakeland? They got, I mean, I've met them all. I've seen them practice. I've seen them play. I'm not sure which one I prefer. What about Dante you? Joiner. It's no question for me. Joiner? Yeah, Dante Joiner. Um, you know, he has the USF, UCF offers. Um, he has those mid-tier D1 schools. I'm waiting for it to catch on to where those power five schools come and take a look at his tape and come and offer him because he's a guy. Um, he was actually best friends with Cormani growing up. So oh really? Yeah, when you see when when Cormani's putting in work or you see a video of Cormani's put, putting in work, DJ is just oh, all awesome. clean right there working with him um so Makes he's sense. getting better every single day um he's not afraid to come up and tackle in the run game he can cover he's fast he's physical he's just one of he has that football iq he just because he used to play quarterback even on jv football he played quarterback uh and then when he transferred over to lakeland from lake gibson he ended up playing defensive back but i i need coaches to pay attention to dante joiner somebody's going to miss out on a gym he is a I, I actually disagree because I think that now that Lakeland's got that many kids, I think he'll end up power five. Right. I, I, I'm hoping so, man. Because yeah, I, I, you is, know, I, I think two or three of those kids can. And now it may let me specify what I mean by power five. That's ACC, Big Ten, SEC, right. Big Twelve, Pac Twelve for people to know that's power five. Like just as an example, Arkansas is really, really well coached. Tremendous coaching staff, but they play almost all zone. Mm-hmm. They don't have a Cormani at corner. To, to be that upper level SEC team, it ain't got nothing to do with Nick. Right. It's the guy. I'm going to put my guy out here and he's going to take your guy away. The next step for a school like Arkansas, they got to get guys like Joyner or Brayshaw or Cormani. They can man up at safety and or corner and take guys away. That's what we're talking about with these kids. I'm not, and, and I'm not picking on them. Like Vanderbilt's not getting this kid. They're a power five, but they're not as good as most G5s. They're, they, they're terrible. The upper echelon SEC, the top five schools, Clemson, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Texas. This is the kind of kid athletically. Now he's still got to get better technique wise that he has a chance to play at, but he's got to finish. See, at 24, 23, I always forget. What you. So he's got a short window here, but spring, mm-hmm. the fall, you can see a kid jump. Because even from my history of playing at Lakeland in the spring, on spring practice, you can look to the sideline and you'll see Oklahoma, Texas, Florida, Florida State, Miami, UCF, oh, yeah. Tennessee, yeah. all that practice at one date. And so he definitely has the chance this spring uh, to increase his stock and get to one of those big time power five schools. Because he had over 80 tackles this year playing a safety position. Um, so that that's just a credit to how hungry he is in the run game and how willing he is to come up and make plays. What would you say besides Lakeland and Lake Gibson will be really good again this next year? Besides those two, 
I know Lake, because I've been there, Lake Wales is going to be pretty good. Which other schools do you think are going to be, shall we say, up and coming? Is it Auburndale? Is it Haines City? Is it Bart? Which, which other schools should coaches know about? So Auburndale had an undefeated season this year. Um, they did lose three D1 guys with quarterback Zach Tanner, wide receiver Nate Garnett, and obviously Elijah Davis, who might have been a Polk County player of the year if it wasn't for Jalen. Um, but Auburndale, I'm kind of weary about. They have Gerard Johnson returning. Uh, that's, a, that's a 2023 guy that we need. I, I, I've been pubbing, but I need him. I need coaches to know him. Gerard, if you watch his – What's run, he play? He plays running back in that nickelback position, linebacker. In the that, that, that's the hardest spot on defense, brother. We talked about it. If, you, if you watch his tape, it's eight – I believe it's eight minutes long, his film from this season. Four minutes of offense, four minutes of defense. And it's nothing but highlight plays. You know what's funny about that? Nothing says Polk County like versatility. The kids, <laughs> I'm thinking about Cormani plays both ways. Right. You know what I mean? Like Jeremiah, both ways. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Kianas play tight end and defensive end. Correct. These kind of kids, the kid that's the receiver at Georgia, the real fast kid that played there at Lake. He, he played DB. He played receiver. That's just what they do. Right. You know what I mean? And it's funny because Auburndale logistically, and I'm just trying to help people paint a picture. It's just to the east slash southeast of Lakeland. And it's not a real big city. Right. But for whatever reason. And again, all these kids know each other. If I say in a group of kids, if I, and it's a unique name anyway, if I say, yeah, I talked to Cormani today, nine out of the 10 kids I'm talking to in that Polk County group, know him and probably have his cell phone. Right. They all train with each other. So while I'm not picking on any one school or whatever, and Lakeland will probably get the most kids traditionally because the kids want to go there and all that. They all train together. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a piece of Cormani with every kid. You're right. going to get a piece of Kianas Thompson with every, they all know each other. They use the same trainers, coach Mark, like he's at Lake Wales, but he trains kids like at Lakeland. Right. Because he's, he's just damn good. Right. Um, there's a difference in the, in the, the state of Florida. There's, uh, there's a lot of dislike schools to school. Polk County is competitive, but that's the one thing that's really unique. All the kids just chill. It's weird. I, Miami is a little, <laughs> that's its own world. There's a I little mean, more. Like last season, if you're familiar with Source 707, they were only around yeah. for uh, two seasons. But I was working with them, and I had nine Polk County guys playing yeah. with the Miami team. You know, the bulk of – they had Cormani. They had Deion Villers. They had uh, – Yeah, I know, Power United. Yeah, it's they another are. Power 7, right. Um, like, the, the bulk of their team, the heart and soul, was Polk County kids. And yep. I had, like, most of the kids – like, even Gerard Johnson, Scooby, Elijah Davis – those are Auburndale kids. You're talking about Cormani from Lake Gibson. You're talking about yep. Joyner and McKinley from Lakeland. Uh, it was guys, Jordy Laurie from Bartow. Like, it was guys from virtually every school in Polk County playing with this team, you know, connecting and becoming close friends through seven-on-seven -seven tournaments. Yeah, I – I mean, I, I know the guys. Uh, Rennell runs that, and – He's, he's a buddy of mine. I remember walking up to him. I'm like, how the hell did you get all these Polk County kids? I didn't I didn't know who you were at the time. Gotcha. I didn't even know what your face was. That answers the question because you know yes, all the kids sir. and all the families. So right. um, just for a little shout out for a little later this year, probably going to try to get together and have some of the kids in July. I don't know where at kind of converge and do some kind of little media thing. Yes. Sir. Um, and, you know, just get photos because, again, I, I hope Kamani comes out, but he doesn't need to. Um, but we need to get some of these other kids. Like, I, I'm going to look him up. I didn't watch Auburn. There's so many good teams in Florida. I can't be everywhere. Right. That's why seven on seven is so important to me. I'm going to battle Miami this weekend because I can see I'll 50 see kids. I'll see you there as well. So I'll definitely yeah. see you there. Um, I need to be able to take a kid like Gerard. I don't know. Is Gerard playing? Who's he playing for? Do you know seven on seven? So right now he isn't playing. Um, uh oh, 
yeah, he he had an injury, so he's he's just oh, okay. right now. So, but when he comes back, he most likely will be playing with uh, Prime Truth because he he was an up fam guy. So he's just they're great there. guys, and they can coach. They can flat out coach. So I, they're Coach one Strong of my favorites. Was, Coach Strong was with him like his freshman year at Auburndale. So uh, okay, and Coach Nick as well. So you know he has that tie with those guys anyway. Okay. Um, last thing, and I'll kind of get you out of here on this. Seven on seven gets kids exposure. And you and I briefly touched on this in some of our messages. And I, I hate saying it, but it, it's almost in every one of my podcasts in one way, shape or form, because I deal with recruiting so much. The transfer portal is mutilating high school football and it's not intended. Cormani doesn't give two craps. Right. Nick Saban, he can call Nick Saban's cell phone anytime he wants. It's just true. Fact. But the number, <laughs> it, it, it's true. The number of kids like him in America is less than 30. Right. <laughs> and less I'm not trying 10. to be funny. And, and I, I am a straight up homer for the Polk County kids. Even though I technically live in Hillsboro, I'm probably going to be moving over to your area to kind of be closer to a lot of different things. It's hard for me to explain to pa parents don't want to hear it. They got blinders on. Why isn't my kid being recruited? And I told my buddy this the other day. Looking at, like, I, I cover UCF, Inside the Nights on Sports Illustrated. About a third of the kids I'm projecting for each recruiting class are going to be portal. They have, I believe, 14 kids, something like that, signed out of the high school ranks. And, and like, a, one transfer. And they're mostly concentrating on transfers. They've got, like, six or seven guys. And they got two or three they might get that are really good. The problem is that takes away from some of the, you know, it's just numbers. You get 85 scholarships. Mm -hmm. And I've told parents, I said, look, I can't do anything about the math, but you have to accept, and your kid has to accept that the number one thing that you've got to do is if you don't get Florida State or Power Five, whatever, you can start out at the FCS. There's Tylen Grable, I believe is his name. He's a kid that left high school from Podunkville, Georgia. Goes to Jacksonville State up in northern Alabama. Nobody cares. He's 240. He puts in the time with his trainer. He listens to his dietitian, his coaches. He's 290 plus now, and he's a 6'6 kid, which kind of helps. He's playing tackle. He's going to UCF after two years. He could have went to the SEC or ACC. He just decided on UCF. Just because your journey does not start Florida or whatever the hell it is that you want, does not mean that it will not end Correct. where you want. Look how many FCS guys have transferred Power 5 just this year alone. Yeah. I've never seen it at this rate. It's insane. FCS guys going up to D1 FBS football. I've never seen it like this. Perry, there's a kid, and I don't, I've seen this limited film. UCF just got another kid about two, three weeks ago. Perry played at Austin P. It's about this big. It's in Tennessee. Right. It's a point get there. It's a quarter Randolph. There you go. Shocker, by the way. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work out to start, but Perry's a great example. And I don't know very very much about it. Which which high school did he play at? Randolph. Okay. Uh he played at Lee Gibson. Okay. There's a lot of kids that just, you know, they make plays but they think they're better than they are or they're not as tall, whatever it is. Sometimes you got to take that extra step to prove it. And college film, and I've heard this straight from college guy. This is not opinion. College film outweighs anything. You and I just like, we watch Cormani on huddle. That's nice. There's nobody on that field on the other side that is in the same stratosphere with him athletically. Now you would just take him as an athlete if he didn't have any football acumen, but like you watch three clips. Okay. He can play at Alabama or whatever. You still can't compare that to college film. So like the Grable kid I mentioned, he kicked the crap out of people at a higher level. Well, of course they're going to offer him a scholarship. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. So just because you don't start where you want doesn't mean you, you can't end. Are you hearing a lot of, like I get a lot of inboxes from parents. Are you getting some of that stuff too? Oh, most definitely. Um, even as recently as yesterday, um, I was talking with a parent about a kid and I, and I asked, well, what's his GPA? Oh, oh, yeah. 2.3. Well, you're eliminating yourself right there. That's High half the school. literally became third. It's looking like it's going transfer portal, JUCO, then high school recruiting. 
So you have to make yourself a necessity. When you're not right. putting in the work, when your GPA is not as high, you're already third on the on the food chain. They're, they're coming to you last, if at all. You have to make yourself that much more valuable than the guy next. What makes you so much different from the next guy who scored 12 touchdowns this year? You know, so – I tell parents all the time, just you have to, your kid has to make themselves a necessity just with how the current, and the, the COVID season definitely is throwing it off for these next two or three classes, just because everybody gets that extra year. So with the transfer portal being the way it is on top of everybody getting the extra year, it's almost 20 times as hard for you to become a D1 power five guy with the current landscape of how recruiting is going on and the limited number of 85 scholarships. To say the least, brother, the GPA thing is the number one question I've asked for over 20 years. That's what I can pick up the phone and change lives, but I cannot pick up the phone and call the admissions officer and choose the school and do nothing about your transcript. Right. You can now here's the thing. Like, in today's era, you can retake classes. Didn't used to be that way. There's at least a chance. So the kid that's got a two, three, let's say going into his junior year, then I talked to him going to his senior year, it's still a two, three. He's on the back of my list. Exactly. I'm not helping that kid because he didn't help himself. That's number one thing. And again, like you said, broad horizons here. How can I get there? is not a one path. Not everybody is Michael Jordan and just goes to North Carolina, his dream school, and then goes to the NBA. That's just not how it works. Not everybody's a McDonald's All-American. Not everybody's an Under Armour All-American. How did you get there? If you take the time, any parent out there, go to, like, this is an example, the, the best maybe roster to look at in the entire NFL is the Buffalo Bills. Their quarterback, where did he play at? Wyoming? Wyoming. Montana. You know what I mean? Like now he, his arm strength is ridiculous. He was just a super, super late bloomer and he had height. Right. But their receivers, like the Gabe Davis kid, he was like, nobody really wanted him. He went to UCF. Dude, he, when he catches the ball, it's a deal. Like he averages almost 16 yards a catch in the NFL. Nobody wanted that kid out of high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because your journey starts somewhere doesn't mean it won't end somewhere else. And, I, and I'm and i just going to say this. You know, I cover UCF. If he'd had Florida, Miami, and Florida State, do you really think he would have signed with UCF at that time? Yeah. No. Did he make it? Yes. Does he care now? No. no. <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Uh, last year, I was at the first seven-on-seven uh, seven I went to. It was over at Jones High School. AG, who runs Certified Dogs. Had a bunch of teams. SFE was there, a bunch of teams. And I forget the kid's name, but he was with the Houston Texans. He was a kid that screwed around in high school. He openly admitted it, but he was a 6'2 corner. He looked pretty much like a Cormani with a little more weight. He came out and talked to the kids. He said, look, what school you go to doesn't mean anything. And he didn't say it like that, if you know what I mean. He was real emphatic. He said, work your craft. Don't listen to what nobody else says. Do what you do. He goes, I went to JUCO, and I made it work. And he goes, the first time I looked up and I saw an elite NFL wide receiver in front of me, it got real. But he mm. said, that's when you got to lock in and you got to do your job. Right. You know what I mean? Like he was lined up against a certain guy that plays for the Falcons for a long time. receiver, played <laughs> at Alabama. And he goes, that's when it got real. Right. <laughs> you know, he goes, there ain't nowhere to hide. You better be ready. If you say you want this, that means you got to work every day to get that chance to possibly get embarrassed. Correct. And he knew it. But he was real with the kids. And for a guy like that, who came, this guy came from nothing, for a guy like that to make it is a great example to parents. Okay, he's a 6'2". His arms were forever. He was an overlooked kid because he didn't have grades. He admitted he screwed around. But he corrected himself, took a weird path, and got to the league. Correct. Good for him. Polk County kids, they have that chance too. And sometimes, you know, like, Cormani is going to qualify. He ain't going to have to go that route, but he can be that guy. If you have screwed around, you still have a chance. Do not give up on yourself because then guys like you or me, I can't help you. Exactly. So, you have to help me help you. Yeah. I mean, look, there's only so much I can do to promote a kid to begin with. And when you don't have academics and drive, 
it, it, it gets real slim. So, well, and when I'm going to wrap this up, man, I appreciate it. Um, I'll have you on again here pretty soon. I want to see the event this weekend battle down in Miami. And I want to see, I got pylon next weekend, possibly pylon the weekend. I don't know up in Jackson, but there's a few of them. By then, I can kind of give a comparison. We did just pretty much poke. I was going to try to mix in some Orlando, but there's so many kids in poke to talk about. It's difficult. I want to do a little bit of a comparison. I want to talk about my list, kind of going forward for the, the better kids that I've seen. We can talk about seven. We can do it a lot of ways. So uh, for those people out there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I'm going to have Landwin back on. I'm going to have a lot of different high school coaches. I'm sure I'll have Cormani and different guys come on the show, Brandon Ennis. Uh, Jalen Brown, I'm getting ready to go down and interview him. He's, in my opinion, the best player in the state of Florida this year. He's at Miami Gold for prep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see him Friday. This show is going to have a lot of dudes on it. And I'm going to have Georgia kids and Alabama kids too. So everybody have a great day. I appreciate it. Everybody be cool.